Uh, baby farts? That must be the worst. What up, CP? What up, though? Chris Powell. You said baby man, farts. You, got a, you got a whole baby at your house, man. I do. Chilling. I do. Okay, I guess see you later. Bye. Bye, Maverick, you little, little okay. baby. Little, little, little baby. baby boy. Yeah, you are. You baby. You not big boy. You Don't baby. Don't look at his head, little man. Don't even look at his head. That ain't how it go. What, what animal is Kevin? What animal? He's trying, to hit, he's trying to headbutt me. Come on. One, two, three. What animal is Kevin? You that, baby? Oh. Hippopotamus. <laughs> Here, what kind of gerbil food are you eating? <laughs> That's Taco Bell. You're supposed to be off that. I know a case of deal when I see it. Stop lying, bro. You said you was done with that. Hey, shout out to the nigga. That's a Taco Bell historian. Like, told me go back right there. That is a that is a, is that uh, a pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, why you eat it off to the side? We can see you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he, he ain't you ain't going far enough off the side. He like this. He thinks that no one could see him in profile. <laughs> Just turn to the side. What'd you uh, say? <laughs> is that Domino's here? Yeah. Domino's. They were probably surprised as hell to get that uh, <laughs> tw- that twelve thirty p.m. call. Like, you want Domino's right now? <laughs> this on the weekend. This I'm about to say weekend. Domino's open at four. I think. A.M. <laughs> you just you, are you in a starter apartment, Patrick? What, what are you What are you doing? Are you squatting? I'm trying to figure this out. No, this is my house. This is the only room you know, that has Wi-Fi. Man, you don't never be no. You always be in this. Oh snap! Did Kev just drop drop out? What happened, Kev? No, I'm still here, Pat. You don't see me? Oh, I didn't hear you. You said you always be, and you froze. No, I said you always be in your studio. I'm not used to you being at your home. Because I don't have internet at all here. And the corona makes it so that no one can be sent over. Ah. Are you holding something? Who? Oh, it looked like you were holding your phone up. It's just the way you're sitting, though. It's just the way I'm sitting. What Why, is Meg a picture? Why is Meg smiling so hard in her default picture? <laughs> it's forced. Like most of the relationships in our life. Wait a minute. <laughs> Jesus. Bro, I don't know where y'all live at, bro. I just killed the biggest fucking millipede I have ever seen. Miller, Miller Pete. Miller Pete. So remember, Pat, yesterday we were on a thing and I got that bug of salt gun, right? And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's dope. I had to use that bitch in war last night. <laughs> this motherfucker Wait. was like a snake. If in centipedes house, are a hundred, a hundred feet, millipedes is what a thousand? Yeah, it was about it was, it was no lies about about like that long. I have pictures, bro. I have fucking pictures, nigga. Like this was like a lizard. It was like an armadillo with some shit, bro. <laughs> a thousand legs? That's bro. Crazy. I was. Ch- ch- bah, ch- you sure it wasn't a uh, uh, silverfish? It wasn't a silverfish, uh, CP. Millipede. No, nah, this was on land in my house. <laughs> the silver fish they run all across the floor bro this bitch bro it it has so many legs I've seen the little ones that come out the basement you know everybody gotta you know you living back at home you got a basement them little motherfuckers no bro this mother was about that long shit whoa and it was it was bro my daughter was more calm than I was like, there it is daddy I was like ah! <laughs> they always no. expect you to you to keep cool like you don't like you like bugs. Like, hey, bro, I'm, uh, I'm still bro, I shot so much salt at this thing, bro. I swear to God, I love that. It was like a shotgun blast in the stomach. That the blood flew out that bitch. I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I wish a man would <laughs> had a black shot? widow what in my garage. Gun? What is that? What? What's a salt gun? Uh this right here. Called the bug assault. It's a gun that it shoots. What? It shoots table salt at like super high velocity at bugs, and it literally pierces them and kills them. Like you don't have to touch them no more. You could be like three feet away. What you know? What Tahir has one of those, but he uses it for dinner. He be putting it on his plate. <laughs> 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 no, man. Hey. 
I swear he to God, got, my daughter he has high blood pressure. That's where you get it from. <laughs> Put your salt gun away to here. Stop using it. He did a drive by. <laughs> he did a drive by on some pork chops. Spaghetti and being like, shh, shh. <laughs> it's funny to hear. Why did Meg come in hot though? Off the little place. <laughs> off the little place. She was like, she was like. <laughs> like fuck everybody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and to to hear hung out the car and Ricky some pork chops. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, me oh, killing uh, the man because you started this. To hear I me killing the cow, he like let me you just high blood pressure, first. bro. That brings a whole new meaning to assault and fattery. I think <laughs> we just uh, we just went farther with it now. I think I think we just went to the edge of the universe with Aww. assault and fattery. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> nigga, <laughs> you see the hair standing before the court. We have video surveillance of you severely, viciously shooting support chops. The cold blood, you just, just going back, just rewinding it, just slow motion. Today on the first forty-eight, <laughs> it's gonna be me in there to hear like, man, he said he wasn't gonna do that no more, bro. I thought it was just a game. Y'all said I wasn't gonna get in trouble if I told the truth. Oh man, the oh. apple juice was like poor job. <laughs> <laughs> we got the shooting range with headphones shooting that brisket. <laughs> the hair pulled out. Oh. <laughs> you were good in junior said, Thicky. <laughs> Look at this though. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bend it a little bit, CP. Oh, okay. My bad, my bad. This is this is the salt grouping. For how far you could be away for what it does to these bugs. When I say oh. it murdered this nigga, it Wait, looks like, like shot from a shotgun. Yeah, it is buckshot. It's salt buckshots. Oh snap! Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you hit somebody with it, it, it wouldn't kill him, but it would hurt. No, it, it would hurt. It could. We we used one on uh, the set of Working Wild, and we shot each other, and it can go through clothes. It's yeah, yeah, it hurts. That's... It hurts. That's crazy. Dang. Yeah, I shot the shit out there. I was so proud because it just came in the mail yesterday. So for me to have to use it like that in a war, as soon as it got here, in a man, war. I shot the silverfish. It wasn't a silverfish. It was it was it was a fucking dinosaur. This was like Hillary <laughs> didn't really fit with Sheriff, so I just switched. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Go ahead, go ahead, finish your stone. Meg, are you wearing pajamas? What what is this? No, this is actually so it's a it's an African it's by an African designer. It's a whole like dress. It's a uh, it's a full uh, dress. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, I actually, got a little African dry fit on. You know, I got it. For, actually, um, it's kind of big, so that's why I'm wearing it like waist up because I wore this at my uh my baby shower. <laughs> Did you really? When I was uh. pregnant, so I was like, uh, I don't need to be wearing these big clothes on camera for real. So I'm gonna just wear them. Bad. Did you see the video of them people at Compound in Atlanta? Yes, and I was like, man, Compound used to be the spot, okay? I used to stay up in the VIP back in the day. Did you? In, in my heyday, yes. In your heyday? In my heyday in the A. It used to be ratchet, so Man, man. you still I've, go I've from to learn a lot of ratchetness about me. To the club. I used to go all the time when I first moved to Atlanta back in like 05 to 08. Oh my gosh, I was in the club like four days a week. You to the point where people like Megan even if I go back now, they'll be like, Megan, come on, VIP. They still know me. That's, really? that's, how, that's how bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> VIP probably not as fun as it used to be, huh? It's just probably sad now. No, I'd be like ready to go home by 12. I'd be like, oh, that's late. I got to go. Man. 12 is late. It is. When you especially when you hit your 30s, why do I need to be out past 12? I hate when people say what we doing next. That's the worst sentence ever. Like it'll be like 10, 11, 12 o'clock and be like, well, you want to go somewhere else? You want <laughs> what are we doing next? Like, I hate that so much. That's never been a part of my life. Really? <laughs> we I, never, that. I went to the club one time with my brother to pick up somebody. I was so saved. I was sure I would going to hell right after that moment. What oh. made you want to go to hell? Just just going in there? You felt like you was going to hell? Well, you gotta understand. Or did you see a couple sun-dressed asses and you was like, oh, Lord. This was in El Paso. There, there wasn't much of that. Oh, to look El Paso. At. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> this was uh, to, to hear. You couldn't even get them chips in your mouth all the way. <laughs> I was trying to do it fast and y'all saw it. I was like, oh. You're like. <laughs> you try. You act like we ain't looking right at you. you can't hide that was an eager chip bite. Let's get the whole chip in there first before you just chomp. Like, Jesus Christ. It's a. It's a <laughs> I think it's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> You try to throw it in so quick. Oh, it's okay to hear. 
Oh, uh, he left. Wait, Pat. <laughs> I, don't I like his little me. obituary What's pick, up? though. As soon as he left, it was like, remember, remember to hear? <laughs> as soon as he left, it was like, man, he was an all right guy. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait Pat, Pat wait, wait. wait. You probably already said this. Where are you? I'm at home. Why? You, every time we see you, you at a different location, but why is your home not furnished? This is this is the only part that's not furnished. It's also the only part with Wi-Fi. Hey, oh, wait, see, up. leave it up to some bachelor dudes to not have stuff in their house. This is this is this was a, a, a room we were gonna rent. What out. do women want? Don't no women have a room in their house that just look like that, or it, well, because there will be clothes in there. It will be used as store. There will be something. You would never room. also hear a man say he has too much shit. That's a woman thing. I got all this stuff. I don't know. Pat but has all this stuff. Have you seen his studio? Okay. <laughs> did you turn the camera off on purpose so you can finish eating your chips? Yes. <laughs> he just didn't want the judgment. <laughs> he looked at the chips and like, nobody's going to hear you scream. You were trying to throw them all in your mouth all quick. That made it funny. <laughs> hey, man, I don't care nothing about that. Pat, what dog is that? That's not Hazel, though, is it? That's what I just said. Nobody heard you. Here's the thing. Don't judge me for this. I do not know who that dog is. <laughs> and you just let it in your house? No, okay. <laughs> what kind of life do you live, bro? I really need to understand. What? Here's, here's how weird my, here's how weird my life is, okay? <laughs> I, I was at the studio for like two weeks straight because of the internet, right? I came back here to like pick up some packages. There were two new females living here with four dogs I had never seen before. And the dogs came in waves. The first time I came back, it was like two new dogs greeted me. And I was like, who is this? And the second time there were two more dogs. So that's black dog number one. <laughs> and, Wait, uh, are, these, are these females y'all roommates? <laughs> no, no, yeah. <laughs> A lot happened in two weeks. Y'all don't have to agree on, on that. Y'all don't have to. You don't get a text. Right. No, I, I was, I was, I was told just not about the dog. So I was just. Oh. Like, Imagine how Hazel feels. Back you be back like, to Hazel. She's like, "What the? F <laughs> Do I look stupid to you, Pat?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I have no idea who this dog is. Damn. He's nice though. Very nice. Always. <laughs> they know how to knock. That's the weird thing. I look back. They like they knock on doors and then they just walk in. <laughs> Oh, cool. my dog knocks too. When I, I let her out, I just let her outside. I close the door and then she'll come back and she'll be like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, but it sounds anymore. like they make a fist because it's like literally like a, like a knocking sound. It's not like a scratch. It's like a, it's really weird. That dog yeah. will be talking to you, Pat. You'll be like, hey, Pat, what's up with them begging strips? <laughs> <laughs> what's up with them? <laughs> hey, how, how does Hazel interact with the, with the new ones? Uh, Hazel's at the studio. I've never been here over here. Oh, she don't live with. You. Oh, she lives at your other house. Mm, she lives in my parents' house. Oh, I didn't know that. Does she miss you when you be out fighting around? Mm -hmm. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> he snuck oh, yeah. that in so fast. <laughs> Come on, smelling like other dogs. He's be like, really, nigga? That's what we doing? Okay. I think that that must happen sometimes. Who? Like other dog dogs being mad at that is such a funny idea. <laughs> they can smell it though. At your house, and there was new labs. I know what a lab <laughs> smell like, Patrick. New labs. <laughs> I don't know what That's it is. Crazy. He, he wise. He got like little gray hairs and stuff. The dogs can say like, oh, "Go ahead." No, go ahead. Pat, is this your first time living in with females? I guess so, but I'm not. Is really... it weird or is it like? No, I don't be here. <laughs> Why do you live there? I don't. I, I just. I just like being here sometimes. But until we get until we get internet, here's the other thing. I'm moving next month again. So. God damn, Patrick! Enough. Pat, yeah. you really are homeless. What is going how on? Do you, how do you even uh, keep track of? You know how hard it is to remember the new address. Oh no, my god! No, I have it in my phone. Getting used to this address, I still gotta write, every, go to my notes, and remember what the zip code is. You don't move three I times in the pandemic. No, I, this is my second move in the pandemic, which sucks. No one got to even come over and like hang out with me at this house. But um, no, I like, I like I like the change of scenery. It's like I'm on the run. <laughs> what are you running from? Nobody. Poverty. <laughs> his, his hairstylist is like, I'm going to find you and I'm going to twist you. He's like, no, you're not. 
Hilarious. Y'all going to sing a different tune next week. I have an appointment Saturday. Ha. It don't matter, Pat, because you I don't know. do the aftercare stuff. You don't yeah. wrap your hair. And does it make you feel less masculine to wrap your hair? Just be honest. It can, because he does this on a daily basis. So it can. <laughs> <laughs> he does this a lot, lifts the back of his head. Yeah, he can't. You do that a lot, Pat. Box you retwisted. Do. It's like what he could be. And then he's just like, he's like dumb and dumb. Remember when they got their hair done and they just yeah. shook it off? That's Pat. <laughs> Yeah, he, when fun. he gets his locks retwisted, he always like he's about to go to court. <laughs> <laughs> but why your hair back looking like that the day after you get your locks retwisted? They don't never look. He good. spends the afternoon with Hazel, and they both like rub their head on the ground for two hours. It's, it's two hours of that. That's exactly what it is. All right, let's get it going. <laughs> you guys like you guys like how you make other people feel. <laughs> God, man, this is me to open it. This is exactly what y'all did. So yeah, I hope you're dead inside. Punk. <laughs> did you say punk? <laughs> punk is <laughs> losing its luster as a word. Punk, yeah. punk, punk was hot from '92 to 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 maybe '03. People don't probably before that. Probably like the '80s. Like, look at these little punks. Maybe like, yeah. oh, did you watch the OJ documentary, the real one? Uh, the punk. They call OJ. So apparently, OJ's dad was um was gay. But they didn't say that. They were like, OJ's dad, the punk. And I was like, was that what they called gay people back in the they, day? They did call them that in Detroit back in the day. The old oh, school. did they? You remember the punk? Yeah, young punk. Yeah, straight up. So I think punk meant soft. And 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 so if you was a real punk, you was gay. If somebody was teasing you, calling you a punk, then I was like calling you gay, but you're not really being. Oh, yeah. I they, had never they, heard they, it they, used in that thing until I watched that OJ uh, show a little while ago. I think it, punk came from jail. Niggas got punked out. You know what I'm saying? And so oh, you, being a punk, you know what I'm saying? Wow. There's a whole etymology here. Yeah. Right. Wow. And he say they used to say like he got some dust in his eye. I don't know why. I seen that. Did you see that? What was that movie? Was it co not Colors? What? There was a movie, a, a low budget black movie back in the day. And if the dude would say you got dust in your eye, and he would blow it like. And if you let him do that, that meant you were you were gay. It was like a way to tell down low from down low, brother. No, I, I never knew. I just was like, I was watching Home Alone and shit when I was a kid. <laughs> okay, it was like this is a good. Oh, ass it was movie. called Cover. It was called Cover. Oh, you really crazy. looked it up and found it that fast. Yeah, because I, I didn't want to say the wrong thing. No, I remember I remember watching it. My boys was like, no, nah, man, don't ever let no man blow dust out of your eye. And I was like, is that? Do people ask that a lot? To I want somebody to know you had dust there. That was the secret. That was like the secret code in, in the movie. Look at, look at Pat, this dog. Look at Pat. <laughs> 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 we finna watch Pat get mauled on camera. This dog is right. Wild. Oh my gosh, look. It's this is so aggressive. I don't know you. That dog is like, but you said you love me though. Pat, that dog is with your face, bro. Right. That was so great. He just climbed up, said, What are you doing? All right. <laughs> Pat got a you got an interesting life, my boy. No, you, you do. All right, well, this promise. is a good place to get a kicking off right now. Uh we're gonna jump right into the first topic. Right after this. Yo, what up? It's your boy to hear more. And I want to let you know that this episode of Squadcast is sponsored in part by MagicSpoon.com. Now, a lot of you guys are already familiar with Magic Spoon. You heard my stories. You know how I feel about cereal, okay? Cereal is a magical meal slash snack slash treat. Whatever you need it to be, cereal is that. And I stand on the fact that there is never a bad time to eat cereal. You just finished a meal. You don't. You want something sweet, but you don't want something too heavy. Cereal. You wake up in the middle of the night. You want something to snack on. Cereal. It's never a bad time to eat cereal. However, as you get older, you realize you can't keep eating the same cereal. You want to see an app? You got to let that, that sugary cereal go, okay? Because it's not going to happen. You're going to keep working against yourself. Well, that's where Magic Spoon comes in because we're talking about a delicious and nutritious snack. We're talking zero grams of sugar, 12 grams of protein, and only three net grams per serving. Not only that, but you get an array of flavors to choose from. However, if you choose the value pack, you get four delicious flavors. I'm talking about fruity, frosted, blueberry, and cocoa. Delicious. Now, again, 
You never have to do what I say. However, I would suggest blending them bad boys together. I always put the blueberry with the fruity and the cocoa with the frosting, and it is delicious. You can't go wrong with this, guys. Another thing, as we get older, we start watching what we put in our body, but we also start adapting different lifestyles. You don't have to worry about any of that when you try Magic Spoon because not only is it delicious, but it's keto friendly, it's gluten free, it's grain free, it's soy free, it's low carb and it's GMO free. That means you are good to go. You got your license, your registration, insurance, Hit the road running, baby. So if you like me and you love cereal, you don't want to let it go. It's so nostalgic, right? Anytime I eat cereal, I it, it transforms and takes me back to the days when I was a kid getting up early on Saturday morning, watching cartoons in the middle of the cartoons. I'm on, take a good bite. It makes that laughter that much more enjoyable. And if you don't want to give that up, then I suggest you guys go over to magicspoon.com forward slash squad. That's right, forward slash squad to grab you a variety pack right now and make sure you use the promo code squad, that's S-Q-U-A-D-D at the checkout and you'll get free shipping on your order. That's right, completely F-R-E-E -E free, okay? And you're gonna love it. And Magic Spoon is so sure you're gonna love it that it is backed by 100% happiness guarantee. That means that they are 100% sure that you're gonna love it 100%. And if for any reason you don't, you can send it back for a full refund. Who's doing that in the cereal realm? No one, no one except for Magic Spoon. So head over to magicspoon.com forward slash squad. That's S-Q-U-A-D-D. -D. Use our promo code at the checkout, S-Q-U-A-D-D -D squad, and get free shipping on your order. Peace. First topic of the day, what's worse, getting beat up in front of your spouse or getting beat up in front of your children? Whew. There he is. <laughs> this is literally my worst Children. nightmare. My Gotta worst nightmare is getting beaten, beat up in front of my wife or my children. Which one's worse? A worst nightmare. I'm going to tell you right now, absolutely, without a shot of a doubt, getting beat up in front of my kids is absolutely worse. Oh. <laughs> I feel like Melissa knows what it is. Like, you know, Kev, you ain't really, you weren't much of a fighter in high school. I never really, you ain't really been in the fisticuffs like that. But there's still an element in your children's lives that you're a hero to them. And if somebody straight, imagine if, remember when, when Hawk, fought Thanos and, and the dude was like, oh, let him go. He was like, let him have a little fun. And Thanos took his helmet off and proceeded to give Hulk the work. Yep. That's what I feel like with be beating up in front of my kids is like, oh, daddy got this. Daddy, daddy, he hit you with a body blow. Oh, oh and, and how people stopped liking the Hulk after that? Bro, it changed my, yeah. my youngest son. Bro, the Hulk had a mental thing. He couldn't <laughs> even Hulk. He was a block. Yo, CP, my son said, man, the hawk got beat up and went back and put a sweater on. He ain't my favorite no more. <laughs> he came back with glasses. My son was like, man, I'm with Iron Man now. Yeah, um, Thanos beat the Malcolm X out of Hulk. He came back like, see, my brother, you want to hit, huh? <laughs> you want to hit. That's the kind of brother you are. Let me tell you this, Kev. Okay, listen. For me, it's the complete opposite. I think that to get beat up in front of my wife with something that I think she would enjoy a little bit because of how much of an asshole I am. <laughs> it, that really scares me. Let me tell you a story. I went to the park with my kids, right? Just me and them. There's a park not too far from the house. Uh, they have a basketball hoop. I went to a, a Target, bought a Spalding ball, blew that bitch up. You understand me? Um, and, you know, and I proceeded to hoop. These white guys and this old black man came over there and said, hey, young blood, you want to run a two on two? Said, sure, why not? You look old, they look white. I feel favorable in this position. <laughs> when I tell you the pick and rolls, the behind the backs, the three, <laughs> the threes, you understand me? The, with the, the fundamentals. <laughs> the, the shoulder shakes. My daughter was like, Do you even know how to play? <laughs> <laughs> to this day, when I play 2K, my youngest daughter, who, who has not learned to filter, be like, if it's not gonna help you really play basketball. <laughs> so, <Ooh>. so, <laughs> for me, I think that I, even with that pain, I could take it. It's like, well, guess what? You know, hey, I buy all your shoes. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I don't need this from you. But my wife, though, 
I think that she would, I would never be able to win another argument. I would never be able to not do nothing. You know how you be like, babe, can you go make something to eat? And she'd be like, I don't feel like you got like, Come on, bro, make something to eat. All right, fine. If I get my ass whooped, and then I come to her like, babe, he makes me ass, nigga, you make the ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you make it, look, TP, you make it sound like your wife would get the phone number of the dude that packed you out. And anytime you say something, she'd be like, I'll call this nigga right now. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not saying she would do that. You know what I'm saying? One I'm more just word. saying. One more word, nigga. I don't know how I would look her in the eye to hear. I don't know. I think that, I think that my hint of, you know, you, you ever have something with like a hint of lime? Yeah. I feel like my, my hint of toughness, if that gets taken away from my relationship, I don't know. She come from a church background. I was harder than all her other boyfriends. No offense, Ken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if I get my ass whooped, then she started being like, well, wait a minute. What's going on? You know, this could happen anywhere? Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't, I don't I know. I agree with Cam. I feel like you can bounce back from the spouse, but like kids have the hero complex. Like kids are trash. They they have no loyalty. They they're all bandwagon. It'll be like my favorite is LeBron James. He's the best. And then you see your favorite sports athlete lose. Your favorite fighter lose. They off. They just like oh no. It's that's that's not the case for kids, Pat. Because kids love you no matter what. They love you no matter what you could do. No, even if you got beat up by their friends, they would still be like, it's okay, dad. I got daughters though. I, I agree with Meg. See, Kev, your sons, they look mean as hell. I gotta be honest with you. Your sons look very mean. I'd be like, man, this kids is like stone face. They'd be like, mm, Christmas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the threat, I could always threaten my kids with, don't make me make another one, because I can make, it don't take nothing but a fuck. You understand me? I can make another one. Gosh. <laughs> Why would it be a threat to have a sibling? Because then it's, it's, it's less Christmas gifts. But like for a wife, you can't make another wife, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? The respect is gone. It's gone. And I can well, see. I've seen this video on Twitter. This dude got knocked out in front of his girl. And I mean, he's on the sidewalk. Dude knocked him out, walked away. His girl was looking at him like, see? See, you like you couldn't even hear it. You couldn't even see her face, but the way she was looking at him, she was like that relationship over right then and there. I can't protect you. Are you see me get knocked out? Because he talked too much. See, he, he probably this happens to him quite a bit. Probably you know, yeah, this happens to him. Quite like, a bit. Yeah, that probably wasn't the first time. The yeah, yeah, she's thinking his shit, his mouth and everything is like, oh, this guy. <laughs> if the first thing she says is see, it's been the fourth, <laughs> fourth or fifth time. <laughs> I, I would, I would, it's, it's, it would be my wife just brought me something out. right now. You understand, babe? Real quick, you ain't got to be seen. And she's like, I got my mind on, but you're beautiful. Listen, they talk about would you rather get your ass whooped in front of your kids or your wife? I said my kids because I know you'd be like, mm -hmm. what about my man? So, uh, see, she just laughs. She knows. This is, we're a very, <laughs> we are a roasting household. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we roast up in here. I couldn't, I can't come with. Imagine me with the inability to have a smart comeback. I don't know if I can live. I don't know if I can survive. <laughs> I would. I would much rather like take that pack out in, in front of my daughter. Well, only because Farron will help me fight. Like I've 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 held Farron's purse before while she fought somebody else for me. Like <laughs> she got big hands. My wife got really big hands, so I ain't never worried about it if I'm with her. She. <laughs> She did. <laughs> but Tahir is also the shortest person in his house. So other people need to True. fight for him because everybody in there looks down at him when they talk. <laughs> I don't think they look to you for protection in that Can way. You imagine Tahir. asking your daughter to, to reach the cereal on top of the refrigerator for you. I Dave has a problem looking out of out of guys because they always stare at his tits while they're talking to him. <laughs> 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 That's not true. When I look at Kev, I be looking at the top of his head to see if it's snow up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just dangerous. I'm like, man, that's it's, it's very low gravity up there, boy. I tell you, the altitude. All, right, bro. All, All right, what about you, Meg? You got a little baby. Can you imagine getting socked out in front of little Mav? No, I don't, I don't know if it's, I think it's different when you're a woman and you have like a son because I feel like boys stick up for their mom. So I don't, I feel like if I was to get in a fight in front of him, he probably would like jump in. Math? Maybe? So like stick up, yeah, you you guys want to stick up for your mom. If somebody, if you saw your mom getting beat up. I'd fight Debo for my mama and then That's I would, we, we'd be in the car and be like, Ma, you see what? You got to stop talking shit to everybody. 
<laughs> but in front of my my man, I don't know what a what would I do. I don't know. It's it's different for women, I think. Especially and if you have a son. Let me ask you this, Meg. If you were in a fight with another young lady, let's say at the Waffle House, and uh, <laughs> your guy was with you, and you was getting packed out. I mean, like packed out. Would you look to him, but like help? Oh, me like would you ask for the help no he would have jumped in but that's what i'm saying that's why i'm like i think it's a little different for but women would he because jump he... in to break it up or would he jump in and pack her out like that's what because <laughs> it's never okay to hit a female but like it's yeah. a great right no, i feel like he would have probably do jump it. in before it got to that point like like you ain't gonna even no 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 how do you jump in to protect a girl getting beat up by a girl oh, it's easy it's and you can beat the other girl ass so so grits on her Huh? <laughs> if you're in the Waffle House, just throw some grits in the face. That's the easiest way to stop that fight. I'm not wasting no perfectly good grits. Not no Waffle Them House. grits are not good at Waffle House. You got to put a thousand pounds of sugar not, to taste they're it. They're not butter in there first. Grits. Sugar yeah, okay, grits. They ain't, perfect, they ain't perfectly good grits. Hey, what's that the piece? They're 2 a.m. grits. What All is right. the reasonable way to jump in and break up uh, a female from getting beat up, though? Which, you've never jumped into the middle put of a they, girl fight, they purse, Put their purse on the floor. Women hate that. <laughs> In the middle of the fight, like, ha ha, I just set it on the floor. They'll stop. They'll stop. I like you got to be like, who nail is this? Everybody be like, what? Wait. And then, you know. <laughs> but I, no, I, I, I enjoy the jokes, but I do want an actual answer. <laughs> no, what I would do is, this is this the way that I broke up a girl fight one time, and I got some hits on the other girl. My girl was like, uh, this is back in high school, I was dating this girl. She was kind of short, like a little chick, but she had a mouth. So she's getting beat up. I grabbed her. And when I swung her, I let her legs kick the other girl in the head, not even the feet, like the, around the knee part. I like, you know what I'm saying? And then I, I took her and we got in my car, we dipped. Like, really? You hit a girl with a girl? I hit her with my girl, yeah. I blew, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we got in the car. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Right side of the head, knee. Could have killed her if it was a temple direct hit. <laughs> That's wild. That is wild. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous. But as a man, I wouldn't lose respect for my girl if she got her ass beat, though. I'll talk shit, but it's like, so? You got your ass beat. Me? Be like, Why would you not help her if you saw her getting beat up? What you mean? Because I'm a man. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to prison. You're going to be fine. You put some makeup on. Meanwhile, I'm getting my ass beat every day now because... <laughs> Not fight, break up a fight. It's a totally different situation, CP. Yeah, but see, breaking up a fight be looking like jumping in sometimes. Sometimes it's just it's different, man. I don't know. That is true. You could get socked out trying to break up a fight. Mm -hmm. They got their cousins over there, and they're like, well, we said nobody, no jump in. So I'm, I'm trying to get my girl. Ain't none of that. Next thing you know, you fighting, and they fighting, and it's just fighting. <laughs> it's a lot. There ain't no easy way out of that. Somebody's ego, ego or body is going to be bruised up. It's simple as that. Yep. <laughs> hey, Tom, we've about 30 minutes in. We're doing great. I think Tahir said Egro instead of <laughs> I don't even know what he was going for there. That's the DJ that won't play other music shit in New York. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all yeah, stupid. Old oh, man, Egro. All right, so where we at with it? It's absolutely worse to me to get beat up in front of my kids. I feel like my wife already would think it's coming. My kids <laughs> have some belief in me, faint, but there's still some belief in me, and it, that would that would finish me off. Yeah, I'm gonna say worse in front of the kids because I feel like, well, as a woman, my man will help. So, kids is horrible because you still have to try to be authoritative after that. <laughs> <laughs> so I say I say kids all day, even though I have none. I say wife is wife, spouse is way worse because if you're a man, spouse is way worse. I could get if you if you're a woman and you say kids is worse. If you're a man, I think spouse is way worse. Oh God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with kids. I think kids is way worse because um, they gonna forget that. They, that that's gonna be like one of those usually like when kids are still growing up too. That's gonna be one of the memories that's like a milestone in their life, like the day that their daddy got their ass beat. They're going to be telling their friends about that at, when they go to parties and stuff like that. I don't need that type of pressure over my life. I don't need <laughs> you right, bro. I saw my dad fight. He did, But he won, though. But I never forgot that, and I'm never going to forget that. Yeah. What was your dad fighting for? Um, I dropped the CP. We was in Brightmore. Nah. Uh, 
We was at Brightmore. You know, my dad was in the hood politics. I was hooping. This nigga named Snap walked up to me and was like, uh, tell your daddy he owe me that motherfucking money. And I'm a kid. I'm not even in that. So I'm like, what? All right. So then my dad was coming home from work. I said, Dad, this guy named Snap said he wanted his motherfucking money. He said, what? So then I heard him telling my stepmom and all his friends, like, he got my motherfucking son in this. And then, sure enough, Snap was walking down the street. And my dad said, what's up, man? Let me holler at you. And then it was like, you know, he's like, man, what's, I don't want to hear it, bro. You got my money. I don't want to hear it. Holler at me. And he said, keep my motherfucking name out your beat. And then it just, it, it, you know, it was, I was in the, I was in the say stage. mouth. He connected for mouth. He didn't say mouth. You know what that remind me of? Remember that bus driver who knocked that girl out? You going to jail today? You going to jail? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. We were waiting for it today. He tricked us. It didn't give us it today. It was an uppercut. And uh, that's what my dad did. He snuck, dude. And I, I respect him. CP, that's more effective. Keep my name out your bow. Yeah. On so you know, yeah, you out. know what part of your body to keep my name out of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he felt the word. He didn't hear yeah. it. <laughs> Damn. Ever since then, a little scared of my dad. Not gonna lie to you. The hands are real. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, okay. And you had a technique. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like my dad is like the nicest guy ever. But one time we went to New York and we wanted to go to like. I wanted to see some of like Rucker Park and like where Jay Z grew. I was trying to see like some pretty wild parts. And he was like, "All right, this nigga put on a shirt that said Bel Air." I was like, <laughs> "I was like, what you doing? You trying to get us like shot or beat up?" He was like, "Anyone who walk up on me is gonna get his ass whooped." And I was like, "Damn, Dad!" But I was also like half hoping, like I, I hope it don't really happen because. <laughs> If he says that and then loses, <laughs> it's come, I would be like, you should have changed shirts. <laughs> That's all you had to do, Dad, was change your shirt. You yell at that <laughs> why you get beat up. You just had What's to- wrong with Bel Air, though? That's so messed up. You got to be scared to wear a Bel Air shirt. Like, damn. <laughs> no longer <them> problems. <laughs> all right, so uh, I say kids. Pat says kids. Kev says kids. Um, Meg says kids. Meg says kids. CP, you don't want to say a spouse, right? Says spouse. Yeah, yeah. My okay. kids love me to death. So yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Looks like looks like the kids have it on that one, and we're gonna jump right into the second topic right after this. Next topic is what's the better side, macaroni and cheese or loaded mashed potatoes? But why is this even a? I feel like there's Crazy. no comment. Like there's this is easy, but. But what is it a side to, though? That's a question. What is it a side to? If you're talking about mash, I mean, uh, meatloaf, then I might have to go with that mash. No, nah, we're not pairing. It's just which one do you like better individually? Oh, and then wait, what? So let's okay, wait. Okay. Let's talk about what's on the loaded mashed potatoes. What makes it loaded? Bacon, what? sour cream, cheese. Cheese. What? So it's basically the stuff that you put into a uh, baked potato. Baked potato, yep. But it's mashed potatoes? Mm-hmm. But I mean, you could no. It's different for everybody. What's whatever your loaded is like. Some people like the cheese, uh, with the bacon. The bacon, the real pieces of bacon. With all mashed of potatoes and mashed potatoes. Yeah, you ain't never had loaded mashed potatoes. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's basically like a baked potato inside out. Pat eats noodles and chicken tenders. <laughs> I'm five years old right now. What is going on? <laughs> Those hey, my you went last- to a restaurant that has only baked potatoes for for options. That's that's all they serve. Yeah, but it wasn't mashed potatoes. That's very different. That's very different. That is very, very different. I, I will say. That. But I feel like loaded is loaded though. Loaded hey, hey. It has the same ingredients. You could load a load a baked potato. Same shit. Same stuff. It's usually baked uh, bacon, sour cream, and cheese, and yeah. butter. And no, yeah. I'm I'm gonna Hi. say macaroni and cheese is way better because it just goes with way more things, and you have it at way more holidays, and it's just it's just. It's common. Like macaroni and cheese is so great. That's why it's everywhere. But loaded mashed potatoes. Pat ain't even ever tried that. It's not that popular. Pat, what do you be eating, bro? Chicken fingers. Anything on the kids' menu is what you eat on a daily basis. <laughs> like they gotta be shaped like stars when they eat it. <laughs> Dinosaurs. <laughs> Grilled cheese. Peanut. Whatever I feed to Mav is the same yeah. food that Pat eats. <laughs> What's the last thing you ate, Pat? The fact that I have a three foot tall chocolate dinosaur in my freezer and you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have it? What? I saw it and I had the money for it. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the chocolate dinosaur on sale at? 
like CVS or something. Oh, now it's now it's okay to buy random things at CVS. But when I buy the hats, it's a big deal. You bought a chocolate <laughs> dinosaur. I bought a hat. We're both wasting money at our local pharmacy. <laughs> That was a hell of a callback. <laughs> and you need to fill out adoption papers for a hat, though. They need to know that this hat is going to be taken good care. Of. It's like, you know, they need to know that other people can wear this hat. And not just, or, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I've never had, I, don't, I didn't know that loaded mashed potatoes was a thing, but I've had like loaded tater tots, loaded uh, potato wedges. I've had versions of this, just not the mashed version. I just Were they always know. loaded the same way? Yeah, pretty much. I just don't know how creamy mashed potatoes would work with sour cream, but fire. Yeah. It's oh fun. yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Kev, yeah, remember we were on tour and um, I forgot. I think we were in some part of Tennessee and they brought those loaded baked potatoes to us. You hooked yeah, that up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit was so fire, bro. Like they had shrimp. They had shrimp and stuff in them in one of them. Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the whole piss. Potatoes were like abnormally big, though. They weren't like you know, like you just go to the they potato. Were like this, like yeah, literally, like, like the size of like a two Chipotle burritos. And they would stuff it with all the meat and cheese. And, and man, that shit was so good. Explain the shrimp one. I've never had potatoes and shrimp at the same time. You got that one, didn't you, Kev? Yeah. Kev, you mind joining us in the conversation and stop emailing or doing whatever you're doing? No, I, I, I be talking too much, so I was being quiet. He actually yeah, tried, I saw him try to talk a couple times, and y'all just be like, and potatoes and, blah, 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 and sour cream and blah, blah. Yeah. He's trying. I, I, I can't win on the talk a lot. Okay, but it doesn't mean that you check out and go bra shopping. It means I you stay here in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go on Victoria's Secret looking for your 32. Oh no, I'm God. sorry, your 40F. <laughs> you stay in the conversation with yeah, us. Exactly. You, you, you so day. mean, but you never see, oh, see on the Oscar, it's a roast. And she be like, I, 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 I don't do that, but you're mean as hell. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this wonder bra will let them <laughs> let them let me talk. <laughs> I was looking up, uh, I was on his website, like it's called how to tell your friends they're never getting married.com. But <laughs> I'll do the research later, Meg. It was for you. I was trying to help you, but if you don't want it, <laughs> I'm Gucci. How to tell your friends. <laughs> I can't get over Kim looking Meg, up bras now. I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> Meg, when she first started all death was sheer professionalism. This woman now, I wouldn't even recognize this woman from the future from how she used to dress and talk. She's been the best roaster in the last three episodes. Low key, though. Low key, she, she came into All Deaf with a fitted cap. That just shows you how, how different Meg was at the time. She had a fitted cap, J Jordans, and blood on her knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I'm Meg Scoop. I'm here to audition. <laughs> I'm just trying to get y'all to scoop. <laughs> just grabbing niggas by the throat. Blood on her nice. knuckles is hilarious. <laughs> Who came but up anyway, with this topic? It was, because... like, it was basically kind of like the same idea as shrimp alfredo in a potato, but it worked. I know that probably sounds gross, but... That was a bar. Yeah, it, it, it was... A, and first of all, the I had never seen a potato that size ever in my life. So he was like, don't worry about dinner, Kev. I got some potatoes coming. And I was like, okay, to hear like, for real, bro, we be hungry before shows. He was like, trust me, bro, these potatoes, you won't be hungry. I'm like, bro, baked potatoes aside. And then it came and this thing was as big as a laptop. And I was like, I don't, these are some scientifically enhanced potatoes. But I was full for three days after eating that thing, What man. was in them? What was in them? I GMO had to, products? I had to here. Um... I can't even remember. Let me see if I can find them online real quick, man. Well, what was with the shrimp ones? Because I've literally never had shrimp in a potato. I had, it literally, it was like shrimp Alfredo, but without the Alfredo sauce. It was like that same idea with, with the, the Alfredo, I mean, without the Good. Alfredo noodles. Without the noodles, I'm about to say, because shrimp Alfredo without the Alfredo yeah. is shrimp. Yeah, it was like <laughs> the, sauce, the, the Parmesan cheese. It was all that stuff, but the starch was a potato instead of a, instead of a, a Alfredo noodle. Sounds fire. That does or sound yummy. Alfredo is the sauce, I think. But mm. I would still pick mac and cheese any day over a load of mashed potato. I'm going to tell you how important macaroni and cheese is, right? People can mess it up. You can't mess a potato up. No. Right? You can can't mess, mess a potato up. up. You can huh? mess mac and cheese up. No, you can, but you can always fix it. You can fix right. it. Right. It's, it's easily fixable. Just add, you just add ingredients, add seasoning. Well, are you saying you can't mess up a potato? 
you know, you can't mess up a potato. You can like macaroni and cheese is so delicate of a oh, okay. of a of a dish, but it, it can be easily fixed. But a potato is simple. Potatoes like that's like poor man's food kind. I feel like well, mashed potatoes you can easily mess up. I've had some trash mashed potatoes. Trash potatoes. I guess you can fix that too. Tra- <laughs> That I, I, was hilarious. <laughs> I probably never eat if I never had loaded baked potatoes again in my life. I probably wouldn't even trip, but I would care if I never ate macaroni and cheese again. Same. Yeah, like, I ain't never like oh, I got a taste for loaded loaded baked potatoes or loaded mashed potatoes. I be like when you have certain dinners like Thanksgiving or or soul food. If there ain't no macaroni and cheese, it feels incomplete. It does. There's no meal where if I don't have loaded mashed loaded mashed potatoes, I'm like man, this is really missing something. Yeah, I feel like to hear. Yeah. Did you pick this side to hear? Did you pick this um category because you just wanted some loaded mashed potatoes? He wants nope. to have him pick his lunch. Like, what would y'all choose? <laughs> <laughs> I can't find a dude, but I did find this other one on on Instagram called Potato Mountain Six One Five underscore Six One Five. You go look at his page, and it, it was stuff like that. Like he Potato got one right Mountain. here with the shrimp. He got honey, broccoli, cheese, and shrimp. Ooh, what I like. Man, good. hold up, randomly, bro. To hear, I have to thank you for the popcorn world plug. Hey, oh my god, that's the best popcorn in the world. Bro, it's legit. <laughs> yeah, in it's the legit. world. Say more, bro. It's. I mean, he sent all these flavors. It's like crab leg popcorn, uh, yeah. spicy hot wings, um, spicy dill like, pickle. Yeah, like it's garlic and white cheddar. I have over a hundred flavors. Bro, bro, it's ridiculous, it dog. Like they gonna be on the show. Like, they're going to be on uh, Zooming with the Homies tomorrow. I got eight black-owned companies coming to Zooming with the Homies tomorrow. We're doing an all-black out uh, using the platform. I'm bro. tuning in. It's, it's, he got over 200 in. flavors yeah, of bro, different popcorn. And the his Snickers. Pop. Oh, and Snickers Kev, he's uh, sending me a box to give yeah. to you. He just hit me up. He was like, yo, I tried to hit up Kev. You think you can get this box on? I was like, yeah, I got him for sure. Bro, Kev, you are going to lose your mind. It is fire, bro. Did you say is it L.A. based or it's not L.A.? No, no. Indiana, Chicago. Chicago. Bro, his popcorn yeah. is better than Rap Snacks chips. And that's 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 not hard. That's that's not easy to do. Rap Snacks chips, they got flavor on every chip. Like they got a, a graffiti nigga spraying them bitches down. <laughs> I only had a couple Rap Snacks. Rap Snacks are really that good? Bro, Rap Snacks are fire, but this popcorn is is is, is just goes it's over the, the top. It's the best flavored popcorn I've ever had in my life. Don't know. Garrett's is no it better than Garrett? Garrett? Bro, it's Garrett. killing Garrett. Garrett. Killing Garrett. Killing Garrett. 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 Bro. First of all, Garrett's, Garrett's is the pink, pink berry of the flavored popcorn world. Got it. You know I mean? Garrett is a white grandma. Garrett's, Garrett's is a white grandma with a little bit of soul. This is this shit is like a fat grandma with one leg making the best shit you ever. I'm talking about crazy. Bro, when I saw the crab leg one, I was like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. Yeah, got, crab uh, leg popcorn. We got hot wings with blue cheese. Hot wings like, with blue that's cheese. One of, that's yeah. one of the flavors, hot wings and blue cheese. It's doing the world of flavor. Hey, we got a we got a peach yeah. cobbler flavor. Oh. Peach cobbler flavor popcorn. Yes. Oh, hold on. Yes. Dessert sweet. All yes. the sweets, bro. He got the strawberry oh, cheese. Hold on, candy. hold on, hold on, hold on. To here, did did you try? Okay, so y'all know how they got caramel and uh, cheese mix, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It has caramel popcorn that is cheese dipped. And you okay, two, you to answer not. a DM, Kev. This Ew. brother, hey, not to how is. Bro, yeah. I get so many DMs. It's just, it's impossible. Bro. It, once yeah. Instagram made a story reply, a DM, I lost yeah, control yeah. of it. When it was just people actually messaging you, I could do it. But the story reply, man, it'd be crazy. But see, and I'd be missing out on some gold like that. There's bro. some downsides to this approach. This is it's one. Crazy, bro. It is so good. How you have it already to hear he sent it to you? He, he y'all, y'all it first. That's why, that's why I saw the plug. And I wasn't even trying to like plug in him like that. I was just like, and I literally made him a video just on the strip. He didn't ask for it or nothing. I just made him a promo video, and he's always in the comments of Zooming with the homies, always showing love. He always tips everybody out. And so I was just like, you know what? Just on the strip, I'm just going gonna, gonna to plug him every night. And You know, it's great. I love popcorn, and my family doesn't like popcorn that much. They don't like that it gets stuck in your teeth, so they just don't. They don't eat it, bro. Yeah. They don't like that. Yeah. They don't like eat it. Bro, this it's popcorn so is so good, dog. Like I, I, I hit him up yesterday and just told him, like, bro, as a black man, I'm so proud of what you're doing, dog. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I swear to what God. What was the bro, name like, of it? You said y'all doing, doing, doing the popcorn world. Of world. Doing the world of flavor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Doing the world oh, of flavor. But it's I like that because it's not. World. I don't like. I don't like it when black-owned companies like 
are gimmicky black, which is probably why I haven't eaten a lot of wrap snacks because it's like Migos yeah. Ranch, you know what yeah. I mean? And like, I don't even really know how 100% how I feel about this whole new Master P Rice type of thing too, because it seems like, <laughs> it, it seems like we're doing oh, the same he's thing. Doing, he's doing pancakes too, you saw that? Yeah, but it seems like Aunt Jemima for Uncle P, and he's like, yeah, I'm black. It seems like the we same thing. We need the syrup, Pat. We just need to go into black-owned businesses. <laughs> it just, I just like that this popcorn thing ain't really, like, black gimmicky. Bro, this yeah, shit is it's ridiculous, good, man. man. He got a loaded baked potato. That's where you got the from here? You got loaded baked potato favorite popcorn? No, nah, I didn't get that. I, I didn't, he might have yeah. said that one. I don't, bro, I had so many, I had to give them away. He sent me a box with 60 flavors in it. Yeah. What? Same. Why you ain't giving me That's one? Chocolate pretzel? Yes. Bro. Bro, he got some crazy stuff, dog. It's ridiculous, bro. Oh, oh. The peanut M and M flavored popcorn had peanut oh. M and Ms all around. Man, it's ridiculous. Oh, wow. So many people and from, look like, from watching the show have started buying him. Like he he hit me up. He's like, bro, thank you so much for the pub. I had to hire an, another employee to keep up with the demand. Bro, oh, we gonna we gonna send him through the roof then, cause you know you know I be eating. And I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I put it on my page. People started hitting me up. I started directing them to him. Like, bro, like, you're going to love it. And, and look, man, just, just so you know, each popcorn is like a professionally puffed. It ain't like, you know, you get popcorn that be like half out the shell. It be looking like a Pokemon a little bit. Like, it's like, yeah. a li you know what I'm saying? Like, this is like Perfectly. fully puffed, like, popcorn like my wife loves it my kids Bro, are i don't I, I don't know how they got so many flavors and it tastes just like it like wow. there's so like many it. that are dessert flavored i i key lime pie you know i got yeah, key lime pie is fire key lime pie is fire the blackberry <laughs> cream cheese cobbler oh my gosh cheese cake. No, yeah i got that one uh kev because he's sending me a box the box will be here this week and i'll just bring it up to the office you said Bro. don't do what don't order anything right now because he's sending me a box for you so you can pick your favorite flavors and then just order from there. Yeah, that's what he does. Yeah. Okay. And it's uh, like it's a, a nice size box. Yeah. Bro, I love that shit so much. Oh, yeah. Save you me something. When it's there? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, super fresh. Super fresh. Yeah. They, they all come in little, they, they, they're like packs that you have to like tear open. Like, oh, it's they're like, like vacuum seal? Yeah, something like that. All right. So then, right, what, this is the best thing to come out of this shooting day so far. <laughs> What was the topic again? It don't matter, about? Megan. We talking popcorn now. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, Doritos and Cool Ranch Dorito popcorn. Is what? it like, um, wait, they got the license for that? You can do that? I mean, it's if flavor. it's yours, yeah, it's just, it's just yeah, a he flavor. Yeah, got the logo on there. It's just flavor. Yeah. It's, just like it's, it's literally called yeah. Cool Ranch Doritos. Bro, cool I got, I got, I, they have Takis. I have a Taki cop. I got uh, the Taki one too. I got the Taki yeah. flavor one too. They oh, the they going to get sued. They going to get sued for sure. <laughs> nah, 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 I don't think so. I, I think it's just like inspired by, you know what I'm saying? My, my only question is like, if, you, if you're eating stuff like popcorn, obviously popcorn like got popular in the last few years because of its health benefits, but like, or not benefits, but like it's healthier than most snacks. If you're eating like peanut M&M &M popcorn, crab legs popcorn, is it like high calorie popcorn or is it still kind of like... Nigga, ain't nobody worried about the calories if you eating flavored popcorn in the first place. Well, I was, asking, thing, I was asking CP, not you, to hear. Here go the thing. Here go the thing, Pat. <laughs> right. Here go the thing. I eat the real shit, though. I, I eat real crab legs. So, like, if I eat it, um, you know what I'm saying? That, that's like somebody give you, like, a coochie flavor nine letter. It's like, thank you, but I think I, you know, I also do the real thing also as well. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't think that it's less healthy than real crab legs. Oh my gosh. Well, that's why, no, no, no. That's why I think it's a, it should be a thing because it's, it's like. Gonna it's going to be a thing. Because look, all your favorite. Like milk, bro, I had a barbecue pizza popcorn, which might be my favorite one. Barbecue mm -hmm. pizza popcorn. But it was, I'm sure it was less cal calories than actual barbecue pizza. Exactly. Is that what you're trying to say? Then yes, I, yes, it was. Okay, okay for sure. Yeah. It's like I, could, I could live off a popcorn diet of this food. So it's, it's, it's literally my like that, it's like that gum that uh, Willy Wonka made where you can have a full course mm. meal. Mm. It's also like the jelly beans that have like a million flavors that, that taste exactly jelly like jelly. stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's literally like, like that. It's like, wow. Yeah, I have a question for you guys, and I'm sorry to throw, throw off everything, but I think this is a great question. When you, you guys have all seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the Johnny Depp one? Whichever no, one. No, the original one. The original one. Wait, wait, Willy Wonka. Wait, wait. Charlie or Wonka. Charlie? Yeah, 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 you're right. They, were, they did have different titles. So in both of them, there was a gum that gave you the flavors of a full course meal, right? Mm. So I want to ask you guys, what's more important? Is the flavor more important or is the eating more important? Like if you can get the flavor mm. without the eating 
and you just got all the flavors back to back of a, of a meal? Or is it literally like bite by bite? Like what, what is it exactly? Like if somebody gave you- You gotta, you gotta, like, if you're hungry, it's gonna be the actual eating of it. Cause the taste is just gonna make you more hungry. You're not gonna get satisfied from chewing. I'm not talking about like actual, like physical things that we need, like, like, like to eat. I'm just saying like, if you were to get, if I were to give you either a piece of gum that tasted exactly like- Ribs? A hamburger and fries or ribs, yeah. And then there was the actual thing. I was thinking of ribs too. Is it? I don't know why. <laughs> no, it, it's just the taste. For me, it's the taste. Because sometimes yeah. I'd be like, "Oh, I just want some Oreos," but I don't necessarily need to like swallow. Uh, just the taste of it makes me like, "Oh, that's it. I'm good." I agree. Because you know what? I think that taste is, is psychological. Yeah, it's like I, a craving. It's yeah, in your we like remember mind. taste. Taste bring us back to like a certain. So I think that tastes are like are sending signals to our brain to let us know that, that we've had that thing. So I think that that's really, that gum would be key for a diet. Eat like some asparagus and then eat, you know what I'm saying, the gum for all the other stuff. I think that would help me be vegan but, and everything. But I don't know if, if, if a piece, I'm sorry, what? No, I, I was just agreeing with Megan CP. Sometimes you just want a hint of it. You don't want to like, you yeah. don't necessarily want to do it. I like what Tahir was saying, if you're not hungry, you just really want to wet your whistle on the flavor but there's really no other way to accomplish that than like eating the rib. And then once you eat, you're like, well, let me just get another one. Cause I really want that flavor again. And so then- you're saying yeah, there's this one gum that they sell at um, Target that has like all these crazy flavors. It tastes that one of the flavors is birthday cake and it tastes just like a cupcake. I kid you not. So I will chew that gum instead of like, when I'm like, I just want some cake. I'll chew that gum. Cause it takes away the, but the- have y'all, <laughs> but have y'all had the cotton candy grapes though. Yeah, I had those. Yeah. Those are amazing. Now, somebody on my Twitter told me earlier, because they know I love those, they just came out with the gummy bear grapes at, that are at Trader Joe's. I'm probably going to get them today. Gummy bear oh, they have And they have the um, grape jelly. Like, it tastes like grape. Because, you know, grape jelly don't taste like grapes. Like, it right. has a weird flavor. I just tasted some grapes that is like, oh, it tastes like grape jelly. I was like, that's kind of weird. But wow. I tried it, and it did. I wasn't going to these Joe's grapes, though. Until, until the quarantine is over. Trader Joe's always has the longest line out of any supermarket really? right now. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's it's like a smaller crazy. building. They it's only have like six aisles. Building. Yeah, true. But it's still that line. No, no, the line is long, but it's a smaller building and they're trying to regulate how many people are in there. Yeah. Some stores are not trying to regulate that at all. You ever feel like, but what if I get sick in line though? Because there's too many people in line. Bro, I, man. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no, lie, ain't no getting around it. You're just going to get sick. Yeah. Yeah. No, you ain't gonna get sick if you stay home and you don't do nothing. I mean, it's possible, but it's much less likely. Yeah. I feel like people are just timing out. They're like, okay, I'm done with this. And it's like, yeah. no, we're not. But, if, but people are like, but I'm, I personally am done living like this. We were talking to, uh, we did a meeting week yesterday with um, um, our patrons, and one guy worked for the state in Alabama. He was telling us, like, they're like, like, and then the quarantine in so many different areas that like people are forced to go back to work because it's like you either go back to work or you don't have any money. So like you are putting yourself at risk just to, for survival. So the yeah, very that's how it is in South you, Carolina. Yeah, it's crazy. Cause my, my niece just went back to work in Illinois in Belleville and literally like, on her third day, she caught it. And then oh, I had wow. to take 14 days off. Damn. Damn. I know. Yeah. Well, at least she don't need the vaccine though. She good. Is that true? You don't need the vaccine if you caught it already? Oh, yeah, yeah. When you catch a sickness, that's like the best vaccine. It's a natural right, but, vaccine. Right, but they're saying that, you know, that's what, that's what like most viruses and things like that, but they're saying that they're not sure about whether or not you have enough built up yeah. antibodies and immunity for this. No, but that's with any that kind of sickness. That's any well. sickness. If you don't get it bad enough, you'll get it again. But for the most part, most people get it to where now they have the antibodies in their body to fight it off. Gotcha. Well, hopefully, man. So getting back to the topic at hand, macaroni and cheese versus loaded mashed potatoes. What's the better side? Who y'all going with? Let's go. Mac and cheese. Mac Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Real mac and cheese, not Cleo's box mac and cheese. Oh, that's just trash, man. I wouldn't dare bring that. Out of Cleo. Well, you know he he you know he got a craft deal out of that. Did he? He got it. Really? Smart moves. I'm going to tell you, bro, the best brand deals are, are come from just believing in what you believe strongly. Yeah. That's a brand deal. You're all, you've already been an ambassador. Now you get to be paid for it. Yeah. yeah. I wish Hi Chew would hurry up and sign me, goddammit, because I, I eat them. Hi Chews are amazing. 
They all love high yeah. cheese. I'm going mac and cheese too, so it look like mac and cheese is unanimous over here. So uh, there it is. We're gonna move on to last and final topic of the day. We have which do you prefer, life partnership versus marriage? Wait, what's the difference? Isn't a life partnership a marriage? Is August Alcina taking you down sometimes, or is just the guy you want to be married to? That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just one person, you and your and your and your husband, or are you gonna allow him to have somebody? You have somebody, but y'all still doing y'all thing together. And that's life partnership. That would be a life partnership, right? Yeah, that's a life partnership. First wait, of all, what if it's, but wait, what what if there's people that are in like a life partnership, but it's like they're just Exclusive. like they live together, they just shacked up for the rest of their life. Right, they I thought life partnership. What you just explained is a married couple who's decided to add wait, a life partnership. So you're talking about marriage, marriage versus swingers. Is what right, that's what y'all sound no, 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 like. No, 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 no. Not necessarily swingers. It could be, from what my understanding, we, they you strip away the normal ideas of marriage, mainly being uh, uh, monogamy, and you are allowed to explore other variations of that. But the main tenet is you are agreeing that you and this person are still going to be together, even though uh, be together as far as some sort of partnership, even though you may express uh sexual stuff with another person you may travel with another person or or you know it's kind of like but an open kid, marriage but, kid, be too, but see that's still a marriage though be together how right in a marriage right. because a marriage is a contract that makes you all essentially business partners now here's the thing what i thought life partnership was look i like you you like me let's have these kids but i don't believe in marriage as the whole construct because a lot of times here's the thing that's like saying like I don't eat pork, but I eat pepperoni. It's like, fam, but then you eat pork. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you're married, then the construct of marriage was about the monogamy, and now you all have chosen to extend that part of your marriage. So the Cause thing that, that, cause that, that sounds marriage. like an open marriage. That's, that's, the, right. that's open marriage versus marriage. Well, yeah. I, I, know, I thought a life partnership was like, like my uncle, my auntie, she ain't really my auntie, but they've been together for 17 years. Right. That's right. a life partnership. It's like, yeah, we just yeah. gonna be together, but we ain't gonna put no title on it. I mean, yeah. you can read at any point. It's an at will clause. You, we gonna stay together, but at any point, you don't wanna do this anymore. You know, uh, here's a little five thousand dollars gonna get you a new spot. I thought that was a life partnership. Yeah, well, I, I think, think, I think it, to your point that that's the whole idea. Like, I don't think a life partnership. What I was trying to explain was Will Smith and them's. Uh, stuff from what i gather but well no that is, so they don't really have a life partnership they have an open marriage mm -hmm. let's just be all the way real because How you know man you talk no to i'm you? saying but that if you Dog describe that that, that is, that's not that life partnership i guess is a is a cleaner way to say open marriage because there's such a negative connotation when people say they have an open marriage yeah that's when you true. say oh we're doing like still patrick that dog I'm sorry, I got to charge my phone I'm in my, I'm in my you know yeah, what to, to your point megan and to cp's point the idea of marriage is socially constructed. So back in the Bible days, you could be married, you could have concubines, you could have more than one wife. Even right. in certain parts of the world today, you can be married to more than one, more than one person. So I believe it kind of depends on the society you live in and the time frame uh, you live, what's allowable. Like even in British royalty, they're like, you're gonna marry this person because their family is strong and our family is strong. And you can have your side piece or whoever. That's like how King Albert, I believe, whoever, Whoever changed the dynasty, I think King David adapted the throne. He was like, I want to be married to this girl. And they were like, bro, you can't. She used to be a whore or something like that. Her family's not powerful enough. You cannot be married to her. You can marry somebody else and have sex with her. He was like, no, I want to marry this person. So he abdicated the throne because in their culture, you you know, you couldn't do that out front, but you could do it in, on the on the back end type of thing. Oh, wow. What, 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 who was this? This was King Albert. This is how King Albert... This is King of uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth's dad was not supposed to be the king. It was his older brother, but he ab he abdicated the throne to be with a woman and shifted everything. And it's because he wanted to marry somebody that his family wasn't allowing. I learned all this from the movie The King Speech. The dude had a, oh. he had a speech impediment and stuff. He was like, "Bro, this ain't me. I, I'm second. I, I don't even talk. Dude, I'm stuttering." It's there needs to be a there needs to be a documentary called Kings Were Wildin'. Because the amount of things that kings did while they were in power is, they changed religion so they could have side right. bitches. They changed, every, they changed so much stuff for their custom ones. That's wild. But you start to think though, man, like, so then what's natural, right? Like what's really natural? I saw a study that said that the average real relationship between two animal humans, not anybody that's constructed through, um, 
uh, society. Uh, society is to have sex five times. After five times, the woman doesn't want to have sex with the man anymore because if he couldn't get her pregnant in five times, he's worthless. And it's the same thing for the man. If I can't get her pregnant in five times, then my psychologically and biologically, my job is done here. See, like, I think that we know so much about society, but we don't really tend to know enough about our own beings. It's, like, it's not fair that we all get to be different people under the same rule of law. And I mean by this, why don't they teach us in school why girls get around each other and then start to share periods? That's some very Bluetooth wireless living that they're doing. <laughs> they hella and think up. They, they like, like they speak up, on. right? That's so why true. is that though? Why why are these women Bluetooth? You know what I'm saying? Why is you know uh why does why does why does meditation um calm the spirit? What are chakras? Like it, it, these things aren't explained in in like regular education, and you're lucky if you get a hold of them. But what happens is, you know, we're taught get married with a person and love is this and love is that. I don't even know why my body is like it is. You understand what you know, I'm saying? Funny, CP, you bring up a good point. I was reading somewhere that. Marriage to one person to one person was because the poor men back in the day couldn't afford to have multiple wives. So they were like, bro, let's just do one so we can all have them. The rich people keep getting everybody and the poor people, we have nobody left. And that's where the idea of uh, monogam Ooh. monogamous marriages in the what? Western society came from. And I was like, now that, that makes like sense. Some broke boy stuff like, man, y'all keep taking everybody, man. Leave us some people. This ain't legal. Wow. <laughs> So polygamy was closer to our instincts. I mean, there's, a, there's, still, um, there's still some African cultures that, uh, to this day, polygamy is just part of their culture. Because there's people in Atlanta also, will do it. But, uh, there's a lot of people in Atlanta. But here's the thing. You have to, like, be able, I think from what I understand when I ask one of my African friends, is like, the husband has to be able to afford to treat every wife the same. Which it goes back to, if you're broke, you can't have multiple wives because you got to give everybody the same thing. They got to have the same big house, the mm -hmm. same cars. It's like, you have to afford yeah, all of like, Sometimes, Sometimes the flex goes further than the efficiency. Because I've been seeing, like, people on social media, they're like, this dude has... 10 wives and i'm like okay that's cool for the flex but like you have to buy 11 meals every time y'all eat like that's a not lot. tight that's, that's not tight you have to keep Man. up in a house with 10 people but see here the thing, Pat, if what meg said is true then where is the love it seems like it was no room for love it's like if you're in love with a woman that's one thing but it's like her sustainability her way of life became more important than being in love. And so then that's what it became like, all right, man, look, the rule is you can only have one because who I love is worried about having a Bentley. That's true. Cause like my wife right now, she won't even like, if you know, when the pandemic started happening, she's like, okay, we got to cut down spending because you know, you ain't touring, blah, blah, blah. Like we're good, but let's make sure we stay good. If I had six wives, maybe only one feels like that. Another one's like, bro, I don't care. I, I need the I need the Birkin bag. You gotta give me what I get. I'm like, bro, but you you understand I ain't working right now, and that ain't my problem. When you said you married me, supposed to carry me, you know what I'm saying, every day. And then the third one's like, man, I'm with her. Maybe five of the six are like, bro, I don't care. Go out and work. Now I'm out here falling off stages because five of my six wives still want to keep life the same. But and Kev, I it. Kev, I feel like that's the difference though. If you have one good wife as opposed to Let's be honest, you have six wives, like they ain't there for the same reasons as that one wife. It's just like, it's, there's Only no- Only one of them like the dick. There's no, there's no way that six people are liking you like, like that one person. It's just not, it's just not right. possible. That, that's, that'd be crazy luck. Well, I mean, if y'all watch Big Love, then you like, yep. it's a show about polygamy. They show all these different couples and there's this one couple that has, they live out, They I guess they were in Utah originally, they've moved around a lot, but like you look into their life, I don't think any man wants to be a polygamist after he sees what it really is like. Man, man, <laughs> I see that, I was like, are you insane? They gotta have their it's, own house and all that, bro. They <laughs> each, and then it's so much like, because this wife needs to make sure she has her time with the husband and then the kids no. come in. So now there's a gang of children. So it's like, it's just never enough time. They don't, they're all different women. So they all, but they have to be like sister wives so they all like they have to agree because essentially they have to make sure the whole family runs like a unit so now you got three women with three different personalities that came into this marriage at three different times and have 
like that's drama in itself. But guess <laughs> how that benefits? Think about having all those kids at the same time, bro. Your bloodline could be so strong. Like you could, I, I could have a son that played ball. I could have a daughter that's played the violin. I, but all at the same time. All you probably same, ain't gonna know all their names though. I mean, you, can't, you, can't, you can't make every basketball game, every violin recital, every track meet if you got that many kids. No, oh, but it don't matter though. Like, <laughs> yes, it does. I got two kids and I can't, they sometimes their stuff be at the same time. It's impossible. Here's what, here's what Noah's talking about. CP is thinking instinctually and animalistic. And I've seen enough animal documentaries to know that the male in, in a lot of uh, like animal societies, they just impregnate, 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 impregnate. They ain't worried about being in the kids' lives. A lot of times, things, uh, creatures will give birth and then leave. And then the, the people, the, the, the shit is born and they're like, okay. But it's like, I feel like with our, our situation is, is very, very different because you either have to do what Kev is talking about, which is having that one person that's just like everything, or it's just like six people who are kind of like, this person is one six, this person is two six, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's literally, it's fractions at that point. Mm -hmm. I at think that, that what Kev said, I agree with. I think that, you know, also, in our society is different. Yeah. We've, we've been built to have it like this. Go ahead, Kev. Yeah. Think about like sexually, you, you know, the best sex is with two people, you know, you love each other, learn each other, learn each other's bodies, right? And what they like and don't like. Can you imagine having to memorize six different people and what they like? And we're like, man, oh, you, 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 you nipple first, right? Or you butt, first. oh no, you nipple, nipple, and then butt, and then, oh, okay, Shireen was butt, but nipple, nipple. And then you like kissing, like, it's impossible. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you would go to middle school and take six different subjects every day. And then come home and study six different subjects and take six different tests and six different finals every day. No, I, I disagree. I disagree. It's kind of like, you know, after you play Call of Duty for a long time and you switch over to a different shooter and it's like, oh, this is kind of the same controls. I feel, <laughs> I feel like it's, no, it's, around, it's around the same no, this is game. Like oh. playing, uh, the brand new PS5 and then an Atari, some Japanese system you never heard of. Then oh. somebody in spades. It's, right. it's like total different games, total different yeah. sides of the planet. And then playing Mom John. Technique. Vagina technique is vagina technique and dick technique is dick technique. You, can, you, you up here going up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. Okay, no, you're left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, start. Okay, perfect. Right. No, man, because I, I, that's I like, it's still hands like, and it's still thing. a controller. I listen, think y'all making it. Wait, 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 wait. I feel like if you're good at sex, you're gonna be good at six, right? The, the, what would throw me off would be trying to remember all the birthdays, who likes what, who doesn't uh -huh. like what. One of you got one of yeah, a yeah. dietary restriction. Now all y'all can't go out to eat unless y'all go to something that's vegan friendly right. or vegetarian friendly. Here, blood like, pressure uh, going through the roof just thinking about this, right? <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I, that's the shit I think about. Like, do you, I think we're thinking like two surfers. I'm thinking about like, like I love cologne. One of what them like is allergic to the stuff that I wear, or she has to have have her clothes washed with scent-free detergent, like that type of my you know what you do like. The, the real problems of it. I can't work alone, I can't be myself. You understand me, <laughs> wife number six, you're out. I need one who ain't allergic to alone. Oh yeah, to hear you can never do this. You know what's funny, all these marriage talks, it's always a man with multiple women. I, Meg, can you imagine having seven different husbands to serve you and, and take your ass? Yes, because Meg is a tyrant, she absolutely would be fucking these niggas. <laughs> Oh my Whoa, God! To him. Yeah, she wouldn't buy all of them houses either. Meg would have all oh. the dudes stand in one door. They would have them there. in the Navy. They would yeah. be on seven bucks. Yeah, nigga, cover the room, Charles. Your turn, Dick. Bring it. Nigga, like, <laughs> wow, really? This what y'all think of me? I don't Meg, know. You, you, have to, you have love it. Meg is loving it. Like I would though. I would. You maybe, maybe two bunks three high, but they're not all getting their own house. You're too efficient for that. You're not yeah, trying to niggas, <laughs> take a dick and feed them niggas cereal. Eat your bowl of cereal and get your ass in this room. <laughs> I will <laughs> say that I have I Meg will stop Miss Smash. She'd be like, wait, did James wash the dishes today? <laughs> Miss Smash go in there naked. Just get your ass downstairs and wash the dish. And then go back to Smash and he just gotta stay there the whole time, just keeping his direction up. Air conditioning, uh, yeah, man, you a tyrant. I absolutely believe you. You imagine a nigga down there like I, I want to know, uh, could I get a little bit of coochie since I did do, uh, I did George's version. But I, is it I, your I, day, Brandon? I did too. The niggas will be arguing. I did. Brandon. 
You know your coochie day, Brandon. It's not your day. But he don't even do his chores, though. That's <laughs> not the point, Brandon. That's not the point. Why do these the adult point. men sound like children? I hate it here. Because <laughs> that's how they live it. That's how they live it, Kev. All of all of Meg's all of Meg's dudes would be accepting Google Calendar invites. <laughs> Listen, she would she wouldn't make them work, but she would give them an allowance. She'd be like, "Come on," she'd be like, "Count the money out." Like this niggas only get one hundred and twenty dollars a week. Yeah, I think you <laughs> so Meg, much. No lie, you know how uh, pimps have the the different people they manage, and they don't even have sex with them, but they manage them. I feel like you could manage a group of male sex workers. And they would be like, man, I got to give it to her first. She'd give me a little percentage of what I make. I can't just be taking my are you, own. Are you saying she would be a good pimp? I believe she, ha she has the organization down. People would be afraid of her. They wouldn't question her. You know, you ain't going to fight Meg back. I think Meg yeah. and Tahir would both be a good, good pimp, slow key. I don't, I don't know about you and me, Kev, but. I would I raise know. my voice, but I think Meg would. I can't manage the personalities. Yeah, I'm not, not hit not. them? What? I would what raise my it? voice. Like, who the fuck do you think you talk to? Meg would come through with rings all across her hand, like, and just backhand <laughs> all the hoes. I guarantee. And I ain't talking about ladies. I'm talking about niggas. Meg would be hitting niggas in the face with backhands. I guarantee it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I guarantee it. Really if, I I Pippen, if I went into Pippin, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody other than Meg, because she's going to keep them hoes on track. She's like, uh-uh, come on. It's, it's, it's two months. Let's go get tested. Everybody go get tested. Let's go. Yeah, you got well, a, a absolutely make sure everybody was taken care of. You wouldn't be out here getting everybody sick. Yeah, maybe. Like, let's product. go get tested. She You're the problem. Like, you imagine niggas all dressed the same, filing into a 15-passenger van to go get, pull up at Planned Parenthood to get tested. <laughs> They all got bow ties. Coming out of a sliding door is just adult <laughs> men coming out of a sliding door with men. They got old name tags. Hey, hi, my name is. Because they all dress the same. <laughs> they, greet, they greet Meg like this. <laughs> Meg, the whole joke dude. here is uh. that people are afraid of you. If you're not aware, the whole joke is that people, that you're terrifying. <laughs> I, I, I will Wait say this, though. I Nick, have are you a Delta? You know she's a oh, Delta God. CP. You I, I, I have to make sure. I want to make you sure. You already knew CP. Deltas are, are so scary. Deltas are so scary, bro. They are probably the scariest women in college because it's like it's like it's like they're like the Red Panthers. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like that's how they move, bro. Like Deltas are like they'll, they'll, okay. Deltas will like Successful, fight. Successful, a they, no, they are. This the is thing. my personal favorite, and I'm sorry to all my other women friends of different sororities. In my life, the coolest homegirls have been Deltas. Meg's a Delta, uh, Angel's a Angel. Delta, uh, Deandra, my, my, my boy's wife's a Delta. All my homegirls in college, before they even pledged, the ones that I was friends with in high school, they all pledged Delta. It's like, Delta's success rating in my personal life is very high. They are like, listen, listen the this, most- this, Delta's write a resume knew, and roll a blunt. Go ahead. This, this is when I knew Deltas were diff different. I had to host, a step show for all the fraternities one time, and the Deltas were allowed to be in it. I was like, "Are oh, they different, different, nigga?" <laughs> and Wait, what? Fraternity it was for fraternities only. Yes, and the Deltas were allowed to be in it. I was oh, like, God. "Nigga, you yeah. got different, different." They opened because Deltas like a mafia what? because it was a it's a sorority of girls just like me that was like, "Well, we gonna be in this step yeah. show." Listen, and then the fraternity's like, "Okay." Can you imagine a line of seven men? You trying to go against them? Whatever y'all say, it is. It is. I know we. It's seven more of men. Listen, no, imagine, going to, imagine going to a club and trying to holler at one of that seven. And you always know it's one homegirl in the group that tries to cock block. Imagine six other women like, nah, fuck that. She ain't going with you, playboy. Stop, stop. Bro, the Deltas you used to come to the Kappa house and shame girls out of being live. They used to come like, mm. <laughs> Y'all just in here just drinking with these niggas like that. What are your GPA? And all the girls would want to be Delta. So they would, oh, no, I, ain't, I, I wasn't doing anything. Matter of fact, man, dog, no, we'd be like, I wasn't doing anything. They was, I can't oh God, imagine people like, like oh. oh man, I went to college in Northridge. Oh, <laughs> missed it. I, I went to UW, but, but. The thing about going to that PWI, there was a black, there was a black community there. I feel like it was stronger because there was, it was we all we got. Like not necessarily right. stronger than than uh, HBCU. I'm definitely not saying that. But in high school, it didn't feel like we all we got. But in college, it was like okay, this is literally maybe two, three hundred of us of thirty five thousand. We really got to stick together. We gonna make it through these four years. Bro, I went to Michigan State University. Our 
the 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 student body was sixty thousand students. Woo! Black students were eight thousand. It felt like an HBCU. Like you couldn't even see past the niggas to see the white people. It's like ah, we're doing our own thing. Like that's how it was. Like I didn't even you never even thought about it until you got to class or like right. you know maybe the KKK show up. But other than that, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and it was how down the street. Listen, like, every time we went to the to to we had a section of the of the like uh, dining room area. It was reserved for the black kids at that school, and there wasn't no official reserving. It was just the black people was always right there. Right. And if you wasn't black, you couldn't just be like, all right, let me just, obviously they just keep coming. So I'm going to just go to scoot on out. You could any, you could go there any time of the day and, and catch up with the black people there. It was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Here, what was it like at Gerbil College? <laughs> um, light of, a lot of cedar chips, uh, green pellets. We had a lot of water. Like, <laughs> water bottles. <laughs> water bottles. Yeah, How many was your uh, college? How many the students? Them was just a wheel. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, it was just one big wheel. You need about 12 gerbils to get going, but it was fun, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it's seriously, to hear, how big was your college? Oh, it's super small. I, I incoming freshman class, I think might have been like I th between like like 900 to 1500. And you still have yeah, fraternities? What, like 10 sororities? You said what, Kev? And then Pat, what did you say, Kev? Like 10,000? Nah, not, not, not even. Like, may, maybe like maybe like 35 to 5,000. Oh, so y'all all knew each other then? Yeah, it was, it was super small. Because I like remember I said at first it was a community college. So mm -hmm. everybody that was going there, for the most part, they were grown or like had cars and stuff. Like when they, it, the the incoming freshman class grew once we started getting dorms. That's that's one of the things that they use as a tool to like get people get get people there. So, and then they got, they built a second uh, building of dorms and that helped as well. But it's, it's still a small HBCU. Wow. Yeah. And there's still, there's still like black for... Oh, boy, I'm sorry, Pat. I was just gonna say, there's still black sororities and fraternities out there. That's all there is. It's 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 an HBCU, so that's all there is. That's yeah, what messed me up when I was at UW. I thought the black fraternities had how at UW they didn't have houses. The white ones they had humongous. I mean, like the movie, like like uh, Animal House type stuff. So mm -hmm. I was like, yo, where's the black people stuff? They was like, ah, oh, you gotta go to Atlanta for that. We don't really have. No, so in St. Louis because they had like they had like. They had like city chapters, so like the there were like maybe like five colleges and universities in St. Louis. So like all the alphas went to the same alpha house, and same thing with the campus. All the campus went to the same oh. campus because it wasn't on. It, they didn't have any on campuses, so they just no. had like a house in the city. Our alumni would have a big house. We had what we did was like my line, a couple of us. We just rented a crib. Y'all made that the cap house. We made that the cap house. Y'all made y'all made y'all. Black people' yeah. whole existence is literally making our own stuff. That yeah. is, if you had to do a log line for being black, it's called making your own. Mm -hmm. That's all. Black is black is do it yourself. Do. Black is do it yourself. That's what it is. DIY. Black is DIY. But yeah, we throw parties, and you know the parties would would cover the rent. So we were really just like kind of. It just was a blessing to be up there, no room and board like that. We had like, you know, yeah. people would come help, you know, cook for us. You know, people who were young ladies would come help cook. And we had a ball, <laughs> man. I was a president. So y'all know I used to do speeches all the time. You know how much I talk. I used to come together and have speeches. And it was, I really, really enjoyed Michigan State, man. Was, I wish I could have went to a, a fraternity. I could I couldn't, I, I didn't live in Seattle. I was, I was commuting and they were like, bro, you got to be here a lot. And I was like, but I don't live here. They're like, you've been a great alpha, bro. I ain't, I ain't trying to be funny. I, I think you, you're the right. best alpha, bro. For real. I'm, I'm not even trying to be funny at all. Don't lie, CP. All my boys in college, that's what they are. All the people that I ran with, the people who were like, I didn't realize there was like a low key recruiting thing happened because I didn't know much about black college experience. There wasn't a whole bunch of people in my family who went to college. So literally, Drumline was like, oh, this is this is like Drumline and uh and um Dump the yard. world. I learned more about black college from that than, than anything else. I feel like if your family went to one or, or like Meg, because she pledged, you know, Meg and CP, because y'all actually were in fraternities and sororities, your kids will know more about it than the kids of, you know, my family, nobody pledged. So it That's wasn't not true because look at Pat. Pat's dad is in, is in a fraternity. He don't even know which one it is. Pat is an aberration in all things, Meg. You cannot blame anything on how Pat does it. That, Pat is all, not the norm in any way. First of all, my dad's an alpha. Okay. You found out, yes, finally. <laughs> Second of all, there were black fraternities at my school. No one asked me, not one. He had, he had a weak wrist. They saw him playing 
And they was like, nah, nah. He talked about it before. He, was, he said they saw him outside. They just like, oh, my bad. What, what, what do you need strong wrist for? To hold the baton and flip the baton? <laughs> That's disrespectful. <laughs> He's on my truth. He's talking about you, Hold on. First of all, we have canes. Second of all, um, <laughs> the baton. Hey, you gotta thing. beat people up with those canes too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Beat shit out to some people. Listen, um, <laughs> the thing is, is that once you've been in it long enough, like I'm over, you know, I'm this is my 14th year, going on my 15th. I can tell who would be what. It, that's like I, I see the incoming freshman, and I just be like, I know who not to even like, you know, it's just you just know. Like, I think that hey, um, you saying that's what happened to me. Yes. No, nah, yes, I just Pat. think that no. I, Pat, honestly, bro, I think, to you, Pat. yeah, I'm about to say, I think that, I I think Pat could have been a noob. I think Tahir could have been a noob. I think that Kev. No, no Pat would have been an iota. Pat, you going to get beat up for that. Don't do that, Pat. Because <laughs> you didn't, you didn't play. It's, it's almost like being in the game. Like, you you can't throw a crib of blood like that if you're not really in there like that. And it's the same uh, thing. We had that on deck. My bad, guys. Are you still nice with it, CP? Yeah, I'm cold with it, man. Do you I'm still practice? Yeah, my shoulders wet too. Let me you know let me saying? see you shimmy your little ugly shoulders. Why my shoulders gotta be ugly <laughs> though? They look too narrow. Yeah, I see, I, I, I have something for you, but I'm not, I'm not even gonna do it now. Since my shoulders see, are ugly, man. Now we don't get to see nothing. You Come on, CP, shimmy your ugly shoulders. No, no. no. Okay, no. do it. And my shimmy better not be better than yours. Go. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> you go first. I asked you. I challenge you. You got it. First of all, it's act like a noob. I'm already a noob, so you need to show me your shoulders. Show me your shoulders. Man, what, where do you rank on the... Uh, first the of all, I'm not one order. of your little niggas in, in your Navy. First of all. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> where shoulders. are you? Are, you're, you're, you're not the oldest, or are you? I'm not the, uh, in my family? Yeah. No, no, no. I have an older brother. It's just me and him. Did you, did you hurt him? Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny my dad this is so funny growing up my dad told me like when I was a baby baby I used to like hit him and he's three years older than me and it was like I would, I would just hit him and he would cry and I would just be looking at him like as a baby and then when I was I think like four my brother came home because like, from the the park across the street some third grader had like bullied him he came home and he was crying. And my dad said, I put my hand on my hip and I went over there and I told that little boy off when See, I was in you kindergarten. Born, I, I be telling you guys, people, when you're a kid, your personality be developed to a point. That doesn't surprise me at all that you are the person you are. Because my kids are both like that. At like 18 yeah, months, you're like, oh, you're going to be like this in life. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> but, then, but then you grow up and you learn about everything else and you have to figure out where that personality fits. So you kind of have to tone it down. But you see no, it it's still full the same. force as a kid. Still there. Still the same. That's they what I'm saying. You see it fully yeah. as a kid because they don't care about all that other stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You mean like their purest form as a child because society hasn't told you right. you can't do that yet. Mm-hmm. Right. But then you grow up and you're like, nah, I can't be an asshole here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My youngest daughter is so cutely rude. She's rude, but it's so cute because it's like, man, you're honest. And I know that you're going to lose that one day. I just, I'm just enjoying it. Bro, while it is. you, bro, my son, my youngest son is so sarcastic and, and he watches super sarcastic videos on YouTube. So yeah. his sarcasm level just increased. Like he finds the, bro, I took, bro, I, I found out my, uh, my son was watching Caleb City. I was so proud. I was like, what? What is that? What is that? Caleb? He's black, yeah, he's a black YouTuber. And then I found out my oldest son was watching Long Beach Griffey. I was like, oh, snap. You, I got to keep my eye on you. Bro. I was about to say, that one isn't Long Beach, cool. <laughs> what is Long, Long Beach, Beach Griffey? Listen, yo, low key though, sometimes I wish I could be as fearless in my content as Long Beach Griffey. He'd be like, I don't care. This is what I, I make. Care. If you don't like it, get off my page. He will <laughs> offend I'd be like, Sir. of his fans. What'd you say, Pat? I said he will offend 90% of his fans without blinking an eye. Bro, he don't care. He makes what he thinks is funny. I'd be like, I could never. I'd be watching him like, bro, you are insane. You can't do this. And he'd be like, but I can. And I will. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> you like hear this, bro. They watch Long Beach? <laughs> yeah. Hey, which Why? one is Caleb? Is Caleb the one who plays like both people in his videos? Yeah, bro. He's so he, good. So, so good, I, when bro. I watch his videos, I'd be like, bro, I. I am not that creative. I bro. just, I'm not, I'm not creative in that way. I'm not even like jealous. It's like, I, I, I have been really amazed watching the video. When CP roasting, I'm like, I cannot do, my mind does not even do that that way. Like, I just, I just want to enjoy. It's like watching, I imagine it's like watching LeBron, you in the NBA, you're like, that's LeBron though. I mean, I'm in yeah. here, 
But that's Bron. He doing stuff I yeah, can't. Yeah. You ever yeah. hear other NBA players talk about LeBron and then hear how people talk about anybody who's just in the NBA, period? It's yeah. such a weird thing. It's like, man, only, only one in 9,000 players is going to get to the league. And then hear somebody in the league like, but LeBron, though? Bro. Be like, Yo, how good is this dude? Right? This is the and the thing is, the worst player in the NBA – would smash the rest of the people on earth. Literally, the people retired <laughs> right now would give regular people work, and we'd be like, bro, he trash. You see bro. Mike Miller a couple weeks ago, like, this dude looked like he could play right now. Bro, listen, listen. I went to Michigan State, um, like, as a visit one time. One of the old players I'm cool with, they, like, they invite all their old players to come up and, like, play the new players and, like, bully them and, like, really get physical. That, that's how Tom Izzo, like, coaches. Mm -hmm. So I went to a practice, and this is when Denzel Valentine and Gary Harris first came to state. Oh, yeah. And so Denzel Valentine is in socks. I see this nigga go from the top of the key, huh, fake a nigga, go under his leg and dunk that bitch like this in socks. That's not even <laughs> safe. Then he gets to the league, and he's like, he's like, Right above a scrub, he's like been like in the in the D League a little bit and up in the G. League. It's like, bro, you were in. I saw you do it behind the back, between the leg, and I've never even dunked anything, bro. P CP people ask me why I didn't play college basketball when I went to they ask you that? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, who? Who this said that? Who asked listen, you that? Listen, so I can tell who my story. So Megan will with? destroy my confidence. Megan, enough of you. <laughs> I went to UW. Brandon Roy and Nate Robinson were playing for UW. When I tell people, like, there was girls on the UW's women team I couldn't even guard. You, you want me to guard the men? There was a white girl who used to come down and, and play intramurals with the rest of us who used to be a little something in high school. This girl used to give us buckets. You want me to guard Brandon Roy? Brandon Roy is in the league after hey, we graduated college. Brandon Roy, barring injury, was a beast. That Portland oh, squad man. was crazy. But listen, Kev, I've seen you hoop on um, on Instagram, and you kind of act like you can't hoop. I saw you and Doughboy hooping, and you was giving them work. It was fat boy work, but it was work, though. It was work, though. <laughs> I'm like, CP, at this point in my life, I'm like your uncle who, like, at the family, you're like, let me get the ball. Let me show you something. Ah, ah, boy, let me get it one more time. Like, that's my opinion of my game. But when I used to play a lot, I used to be much better. But I'm almost 40 years old, bro. I'm, I'm far removed from playing basketball a lot. I envy you, man. I've never been good at basketball, but I've always had the great moves. And then my mom would – I would literally open the East Bay book and be like, I need this headband, this jersey. <laughs> and so – Y'all yeah, remember when Marlon Wayans was on above the rim, he showed up at the all goal. That was me. I couldn't make a shot. My dribbles, my fucking socks was I was I used to come, I used to, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just be, bro, I was so bad. That's why I think my kids seeing that from all the, the kind of guy that I am, to see that kind of lack of skill, <laughs> they was like, what? They was like, not my daddy, not Mr. Shit himself. <laughs> Not my daddy. Oh, man, bro. You see the life in the eyes just go like, yeah. <laughs> Look, like, Can somebody Look. else take me home? Look, bro, my oldest one went over there and just started playing on the swings. My youngest one just stood there like. <laughs> I'm like, just go play. They're fucking killing me. Just, I'm, Daddy's tired. Just go play. She was on the phone at any moment. He has to turn it on at any moment, bro. Right? Yo, <laughs> let's, get, let's, get back, let's get back to the topic at hand. All right, well, okay, to hear. Life partnership versus marriage. Which one? Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Hey. I told you how did we get away. so far? I don't know how we got to Michigan We never State. even really discussed no, this. Basketball socks from, from life partnership and marriage. We're not going to try to track that back. Can we track it back, though? Can we? No. No, I that don't okay. take too no. much time. We don't even have. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I have no idea. I will say this though: I, the, the in terms of like life partnership and marriage, I've always been against marriage because it seems like a a weird contract for people who should just like each other. Like I know people who don't love each other anymore, but they are they can't afford to get a divorce, which is the worst situation to ever be in. So I'm going with life partnership, but. Have you guys ever seen Chef's Table on Netflix? Yeah. Nah, I've never seen it. 
life changing. There is literally an episode that changed my whole outlook on marriage. There's a chef that cooks in the middle of like the, the fields of Europe, and he has a longtime girlfriend who he has a kid with, but he just bought her a spot, her own spot. They they raise the kid with her because they, they enjoy their own space. That's 100 percent what I'm doing. I'm not getting oh, I- Listen, Pat, you already were like that. You, the episode just secured you in your thought. You were just like, oh, someone else has done this already. Perfect. <laughs> yes, I was absolutely, yeah. That, that was just like, oh, you could do that? Okay, for sure. Like, I am going to buy my quote unquote wife, not by marriage, but I'm, I'll get her her own spot, all that stuff. But marriage is not going to happen. Cool. Oh. I said the I, same thing. I said the same thing when I was like 25, too. Yeah, yeah, I sure did. I was like, that shit's dumb. That's like, like, I was so, like, I was sweet, but I was just like, yo, man, marriage, like, even dates. Dates is like the stock market, bro. Like, why would you invest so much money into that first? <laughs> it's, it's the first time you you checking out these stocks. Are you going to put $100 in? Nah, bro. Let's go to Starbucks. I I can I can invest twenty dollars. Oh I can invest. My God. And I was like, marriage is done. Like fifty percent of marriages fail. If somebody told you fifty percent of good year tires explode on the road, you gonna get married? Are you gonna get those good good year tires smoke? That's sixty percent of marriages don't work. It's sixty now. Is it sixty now? No, After it's quarantine, it's sixty. Sure. It's sixty of second time marriages, and then it just keeps going up after that. Oh, like <laughs> like eighty of third time. Like it didn't work the first time. Yeah. Here's the other thing. I will say this. I think that as a married man, okay, first of all, let me let me talk because that's that's my answer that I'm gonna say it. But I will say that there's something to knowing that somebody likes you enough to be there without it being a contract, right? There is something to that. And I think that without the contract, the love could seem more pure, right? I think Mm -hmm. that um, however, being a married man. I can only attest to how being married has really benefited my life. I think it's really enhanced me. It's really helped me to be the best that I can be without having to worry about who I'm going to be with. I'm, I already have it. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to worry about that. Um, at the same time, here's the problem, right? And I'm going to just say that. I ain't going to be long-winded, but here's the problem. Me being married to my wife has allowed me to become the best CP that I can be. But then becoming that CP, I have to remind myself that, yeah, I feel like this CP could probably go out and date and get whoever that I wanted to get. But then I wouldn't be this CP without the determination and everything that I've gotten from being married and having my wife. So it's like, man, it's kind of weird because it's like she has built me up or allowed me to build myself up to have this supreme confidence. But. I can't let that go to my head and feel like I can't, I can, you know what I'm saying? Like I owe her to make sure that I keep my ego in check enough to be like, all right, I can, you know what I'm saying? Because Man. yeah. So yeah, marriage for me. I never, Pat heard, looks like he's I never heard it put like perfect that. Selfie light, by the way. Huh? Pat looks like he'd been trying to find the perfect selfie light this whole, <laughs> this whole episode. <laughs> now he finally found it. So everyone <laughs> agrees with this lighting. Yes, let's go with that. Post that on the ground. Quarantine selfie life. ACP, <laughs> hey, hey, real quick, I, I will just, I will attest to that. Before Farron, uh, Farron and the kid moved out here, I mean, I was still doing the clubs and stuff like that, but when they moved out here and the pressure was on me to be a provider, to be the leader of the household, to be the captain of the ship, it lit a fire under me that I had never experienced in my life. I was working at Banana Republic making... 915 an hour after being a manager with a college degree uh that wasn't enough money so i started working overnight at walgreens at the same time i quit banana republic and started working at carmax and was doing carmax and, and overnights at walgreens for like a month but i would have never did that had it just been me i was like no, i'm straight i got everything i need but to be a provider for somebody and the way that she's lifting me up and also like make me a better person from like communicating to stop looking at her or patience. I mean, just huh? Stop <laughs> looking at her. And uh, the way the <laughs> way she's not even here. She the fuck. Lift, lift uh, there he is, bro. Shut the fuck. She's not even. <laughs> anyway, I, I just agree with your sentiments. I wouldn't be like who I am right now had it not been from her pushes right. and her love and her patience. And understand. But if she would ever leave me, I'm a cool motherfucker. I'm set now. But I'm just saying. Hey, but I feel you. Hey, He's I straight though. Like I already told her, if we ever break up, like. 
Like if you know, worst came to worst, like she's still straight. Like whoever she get with yeah. everyone, that nigga just gonna have to understand. I'm gonna keep buying her cars. I'm gonna keep giving her monthly allowance and all of that. Like she ain't never got worried about nothing. She'll be straight forever. She she gonna cuss him out. You think I need you? I have an allowance. Yeah. Uh, to hear need her for protection because she could fight. <laughs> I mean, when I get to that you point, I'm gonna have more. bodyguards. I'm gonna have bodyguards. I ain't worried about that. Exactly. <laughs> But anyway, you know uh, what? So I, I would marriage. naturally, well, when you think about life partnerships, not the Will and Jada one, because that's an open marriage, but like life partnerships, like them people that you know that have been together for like 25, 30 years and never, never been married. I think, like CP said, the one thing, the beauty of that is that, you know, you could be with somebody and you know that they're there because they want to be with you, not because they have to be. But on the flip side, I think the one thing that marriage does is that when you, when it's rough, it forces you to try to work it out. Whereas when you're not married to somebody, it's like, well, I can just leave. I mean, I'll just leave. Right. But then when you're married to them, it's like, okay, let's just, let me, let's work through the problems. And a lot of times it might be you, that's the problem, which means you, you become better in the process because you've had to work through that. So because of that, I definitely feel like marriage is, is better and more beneficial to people. Okay. Y'all be, y'all be, out of everybody I know, you guys make marriage sound the best. Cause it Man. should be. I mean, it's not. I mean, I'm not married, but I'm just saying it. Sh- it shouldn't be something ugly. You know what I mean? Like, it, when you when things get bad, you're supposed to go like, okay, let's reset or let's think about this. Like, th- this ain't a life that we want to live. Change your marriage. Like, do what you got to do. If it's go to therapy, if it's go, you know, even if it's like, hey, let's just take a a week break or whatever <laughs> from each other. We just Bruh, need do to you do you understand it? I, I I used to didn't even want to iron my clothes. I just be like, why the fuck would I iron? My wife is like, yeah, you look, you look like you iron. You look. <laughs> well, now so, I iron, but that's <laughs> the, but that's the point though. So now it's like, here's the thing, Pat. A wife is gonna take your swag up so much, and then you gotta be careful because you with this new swag, you're gonna attract people who never saw you in this light. People, are like, oh man, you're a husband. You look like a husband. You acting like a husband. Wish you was my husband. Here's some pussy. Now you in a pickle. So you have to, you have to, you have to always it remember. So it happens so fast, man. You have to, you have to remember that it's like okay. Remember who you were. You know, what I'm saying that you know you was a nigga with the with the asparagus nest in the dress. She might fuck around and have your net, your dress braided down the back. You be like, oh, this is a whole new swag for me, right. tuxedo mask pack. And now you, now, you know, it's, it's tricky, brother. It is tricky. I'm out here with smooth clothes. And, I got and, and 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 that right there, I think, is a perfect way to end it. But also, just to give women their props, <laughs> women will right, elevate men. I, I, I'm sorry, Kev. I'm, I'm gonna let you get to it too. But women elevate black men on a level that we would never be able to achieve on our own. And it it, it breaks my heart. Now, if there's you know irreconcilable differences and y'all have to split, that's one thing. But like, if you level up after uh, this woman has has built you into an amazing man or help you see your potential and then you leave her just for something new, you weak, you weak as hell for that. So I just want to give a, a shout out to black women for being dope for that. So Kev, Meg, thank you guys so Aww. much for just being y'all selves and just being beautiful black women uplifting the community. <laughs> you know, and nurturing the community. The jokes are well, just caught it. With y'all. Yeah, yeah, it was good. <laughs> Like, oh, to hear you must you do stand coming. You it's like a Manny Pacquiao punch. Like, how you throw a punch from that angle? Yeah, I'll just say this. I don't want to repeat anything Meg to hear CP said because they all said amazing thing. I would say the benefit of marriage is like how you grow up with nothing, right? And it forces you, like Meg was talking about how you when you want to stay married, it forces you to be better. It's like being creative. Remember our all deaf. We came up with these shows because we didn't have the budget. Like our creativity was stressed because it was like, no, y'all can't do this. And we need a show with no budget that you can do with the people that work here that you can shoot six episodes in a day. And you're like, dang, that's a lot of, that's a lot of parameters, but great taste came out of that. Dad jokes, roast me, like all that stuff came out of the parameters. So when you're forced to figure it out, it, it requires the best version of yourself. Um, and that's what I think marriage is. Also, when I had Melissa, when I dated her in high school, I was like, it's not going to get no better than this for me. So let me just go ahead and push all my chips in. I don't, listen, I have a second chance at a woman like this. And then the crazy thing is watching her just become more and more beautiful and confident and a better version of herself. It's like drafting a seventh round quarterback and you like, man, we got Tom Brady. You didn't even know he was going to be Tom Brady. And then you just like, I think he got a good chance. And he's like, no, nah, man, we're going to win five Super Bowls. You're like, oh my God, that's what I feel like. But this is the Tom Brady of my life. <laughs>
Oh, uh, that is the round. I was in the sixth round. Sorry, he went to Michigan, CP. You, you know, you get the. You, I hate Michigan. So I hate Michigan with all my heart. That's why I knew when he got drafted, I was happy. I thought he was a loser, and here he is. Anyway, <laughs> so marriage. All right, so us three marriage. Pat, what are you? you lifetime partner. That's lifetime, lifetime partner. Let's okay. Working our own. Four. Okay, so it's four to one. Looks like the marriage has it. Uh, that's been another episode of Squadcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and sending in the suggestions. Uh, man told Kev to tell his titties to sit. <laughs> sit back. <laughs> Why are they shaped and like that? that? And now we you got some little lemon back. titties, huh? You got, you got some little lemon titties, Beyonce. We, we no, damn, they got some lemonade. We finna got flags. Thank you guys so much for watching, man. It's been another episode. We'll see you next week. Peace. All right, y'all. Hey.